Hello there, my name's John Price and this is a short video on how to be a good defender in playing the game of bridge. Here's some words of advice on this difficult task. Firstly, you have to listen to the bidding. It's surprising how often people, when they've got a weak hand and they're not involved with the bidding, just seem to switch off. And a surprise, for example, when their partner tells them, why didn't you lead the suit that I bid? They didn't even notice that their partner had bid that. So you've got to concentrate. And you have the right, if you wish, to ask the opponents about what they mean by their bidding. Secondly, when the game starts, then you can look at the dummy. And when I say look, I mean look at it very, very carefully. The amazing thing about bridge, the fabulous part of it, is that when you're playing a contract, you can see half of the cards, your own 13, and the 13 cards that are laid down on the table in the dummy. This is what makes it a very special and complicated game. Don't forget to look at the dummy to glean as much information as you can. Now, those two bits of advice are a bit vague, so let's be a bit more specific. Where's the key point in defending? And I tell you now, the key point is the opening lead. And it's very special because this is the one and only point when a person playing a card can only see the 13 cards that they have. The dummy hasn't been laid down yet. So that makes the opening lead very difficult. You're leading blind, as it were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the rest of this uh, video just talking about some advice about making a reasonably good opening lead. Let's begin with what to lead in a suit contract. And I'm going to start with what I think are the best leads you can do in this situation. Top of my list is leading your partner's suit. That makes it nice and easy. If your partner has said anything in the bidding, lead that suit. Well, what after that? Your partner hasn't bid anything. What do you do? It seems logical to look into your hand and if you have a winner, an ace, play that. What can be wrong with doing that? You're bound to win and then you can have a look at the dummy and decide what to do next. Well, it sounds good and very occasionally that might be a good way of leading. But what you want to do from your ace you want that ace to win a, um, a trick, but also you want that ace to go on top of one of the opponent's good cards. And if you play it straight away, they're going to put small cards underneath that. So I wouldn't recommend leading an ace. However, next on my list is leading an ace. But this is an ace from an ace-king. Now this is ideal. Not only are you sort of guaranteed of winning with that ace, but you still have a winner, a king, to put on one of the opponent's good cards. It's an ideal lead if you happen to have an ace-king. If that option is not available, then how about this? Maybe you're lucky enough to have a singleton in a suit other than Trump's. Now, why not play that? And on the next round, hopefully, you'll be able to do some trumping. So that's the second on my list. Pretty close to playing the ace from the ace-king. What next? Well, if you've got a sequence of three cards to an honour, 
King Queen Jack or Queen Jack 10, then lead one of that top sequence. In fact, I've underlined here, you lead the top card. Why? If with the king, the queen and the jack, they've all got the same power. If your partner's got the ace, then they're winners. If the opponents have got the ace, then they'll have to put it on the king and then the queen and the jack are the winner. But the same is true of the jack. If you played the jack, the ace would have to be played and the king queen would be the winner. Why play the top? Well, we have this convention in bridge as a way of signaling to our partner. If you have a sequence of cards and you're leading, lead the top of that sequence. So when you play the king, your partner will know, aha, that's the top of a sequence. So they've definitely got the king, they played it, and also the card underneath, the queen. But they don't have the card above. They don't have the ace. Same with the queen, jack 10. If you play the queen, your partner will know that you've definitely got the jack, but you definitely have not got the king, though you may have the ace. Sometimes you've only got two of a sequence, so that's less ideal, but that's just pretty well acceptable, as long as you remember to leave the top of that sequence. What after that? Well, I think after that, you want to have a neutral lead. I've given you the good ones. If you haven't got any of those, try and make it not a bad one, shall we say. Well, what can I recommend here? Not a lot. What about if you've got a queen and some other small cards? Don't play the queen. That will obviously get put on by one of the good cards from the opponents. But if you play a small card, as small as you can, so I've underlined here the bottom of the sequence, then when your partner sees that you've played a low card, again, that's understood to say, partner, I've got something reasonably good at the top of this suit. Why don't you lead it back to me if you can? So I'd lead the bottom of queen and then some small cards. If you've got queen and two small cards, that's a possibility as well, but I wouldn't be all that keen on that. How about a king and some small cards? Ugh. No, I'd class that not even as being neutral, I'd class that as being very bad. It's almost certain that you're not going to make the most of that king in that case. So avoid that if you can. And if that's the case, well, here's another neutral set of uh, a lead. If you've got four rubbish cards, or possibly three, then play the second highest. Why the second highest? Well, if it's the second highest, it'll be a high card, and that's a way of saying to your partner, no, I don't have much in this one. If I play high, I'm not bothered about you returning this. But if I play low, then I want you to return it. But if I play a high card, and then the next card has to be a little bit lower, then that is understood by many bridge players as saying, oh, partner, I've run out of that suit, lead them again and I can trump them. So if you play the second highest, then the next card you play will be the highest card, and you haven't given that wrong message to your partner. What about in a no-trump contract? That's a different animal. Let's have a look, look at my list here. Good opening leads? Well, I'm going to start again with your partner's suit. If your partner has bid, that's what you have to lead. But after that, well, I think there's only one choice. You lead from your longest suit. The only question is, which card from this longest suit? Well, if you've got a three-card sequence, then lead one of that top sequence. 
And again, you lead the very top. For, if you, for example, if you've got a queen jack 10, then lead the queen. Your partner will know then <coughs> that you have the jack, but not the king, though you may have the ace. Only do this to a, to a secant with a top of an honor. So even with 10, 9, 8, and another one, or maybe two, I would lead the 10. And your partner will say, that means my partner's got the nine, but hasn't got the jack. I guess the same is true of only a two card sequence. It's certainly not as good, but it's a fairly neutral lead. And if you haven't got any of those, then what you do is you lead the fourth highest of your longest suit. Now, you're doing what we suggested. You're leading from your longest suit. But if you lead the fourth highest, there's a rather nice trick that your partner can do. Looking at that card, whatever number it is, then they take that card away from 11. For example, if you lead a seven as your fourth highest, your partner would take seven from 11 and get the number four. And that means that there are four cards higher than the seven amongst the other three hands. Now your partner can see the dummy and their own cards, so they'll be able to work out how many cards higher than your lead, say the seven, is in the hand that they can't see, the declarer's hand. That's a useful bit of information. So if you're going to lead from your longest suit and you haven't got these two options, then go for the fourth higher. Well, I hope these two lists have been helpful. Thank you for listening.